Hello, I'm Professor Theo Myrie from the University of Washington School of Law, and I want to talk to you about the Bostock case, a decision the United States Supreme Court just handed down, and everybody is talking about it. First, Bostock is not one case, uh, case, it's actually three cases. The first case involves a person named Bostock who was fired by their employer uh, for playing on a gay softball team. The second case involves a person named Zarda who was fired by their employer for coming out as gay. And the third case involves a person named Steffens who was fired by the funeral home they worked for when they were hired as a man but transitioned into becoming a transgendered woman. The legal question is whether sexuality and transgendered status uh, fall under the protections of the Title VII anti-discrimination statute. The Supreme Court then saw these circuit courts arguing with each other and they took the case to give us an answer and they gave us a definitive answer in a 6-3 decision. Sexuality and transgendered status both fall under uh, the statutory definition of what uh, sex means. So Title VII was enacted in 1964, and the, the legislature never, never gave us a definition of what sex means. But uh, we have had cases that took the definition of sex and applied it to gender. So a woman, for instance, who uh, was denied employment because she had small children, her gender role was seen as falling under uh, on the basis of sex as a, a protected category. Uh, we've also seen it in a case uh, where a woman was denied promotion time and time again because she was not feminine enough. She, she presented as too masculine. So, so when we come to these cases, uh, then we actually see that uh, sex equals gender roles, sex equals gender expression, sex equals both male and female, and now sex also equals sexuality and transgendered status. The decision itself, though, is only a statute, uh, statutory interpretation. That means that the Supreme Court, particularly Justice Gorsuch, was very clever in limiting this interpretation only to the statute. There's no constitutional argument being made. What does it address? Only employment discrimination. What doesn't it cover? Everything else. So the health care rights, uh, parenting or adoption rights, housing rights, uh, it, virtually everything else uh, is not covered by this decision. So that means that uh, where we go to from here in Pride Month is we celebrate the victory. We say, yes, this is excellent for LGBTQ civil rights in terms of employment, but there are still fights to be had.